Okay, good morning, good evening, depending on the time zone, everyone. Okay, welcome to our first webinar. Uh, and we're just going to be discussing Bluetooth. Uh, so I'm hoping everyone can hear us okay. I'll just uh, I'll mute everyone for a second if you can just just give us a heads up if um, if you're able to hear us or not. Uh, just give us one second. Got Leg, can you hear us, Leg? Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah, okay. So, anyway, we're just going to go through asset tracking with Bluetooth today, okay, which is very new and exciting in our product range. Uh, it's something that we're quite keen on and judging by some of the feedback we've been getting, uh, it sounds like that's the case with uh, with a, a lot of our uh, channel partners as well. Uh, so we're just going to run through to, to get going just a few key terms and uh, just provide a bit of a brief overview as well. Continue to sound on. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. Okay. So, just jumping into it. Okay. Uh, I think everyone might have seen this asset tracking with Bluetooth uh, slideshow that we've done. Uh, we're just going to skim through this just to check everyone's on the same page, uh, just to introduce the range of devices uh, as it will help when we're discussing uh, some of the applications and and some of the details about what's going on with Bluetooth. Uh, so our key products are. Uh, we have two distinct products. So we have our gateway devices. So these are devices, our standard tracking devices with GPS uh, that also have a Bluetooth module on board and they're able to receive signals from uh, Bluetooth tags, sensors, uh, pretty much most things are Bluetooth available. Uh, and they have GPS for their location and they are also, so then they transmit the data to the server over either 2G or CAT M1 networks. Uh, so the main options we have are our powered vehicle tracker, which uh, is the G120. So this is what you'd wire into any of your trucks, assets, uh, even in a stationary location if you needed. Uh, and this will scan continuously for tags non-stop. So any tag that comes into range, the minute that it sees it, uh, it's going to pick it up and it'll keep it in its list. Uh, and we have our battery powered gateway, which is the Remora 2. Uh, so this is a tamper detect, uh, it's got Bluetooth on board uh, and it takes two D cell uh, lithium thionyl chloride batteries. So the distinction here is it operates in a similar way. It's just due to battery life, uh, uh, due to the fact that it's battery powered uh, and we need to conserve energy. Uh, we won't be continuously scanning nonstop. Uh, so what we set this device to do is wake up perhaps every half an hour, uh, search for tags for a minute or so or whatever makes sense to be scanning for uh, and then we put it back to sleep. Uh, so if you have tags running in and out a lot and you're not scanning all the time, uh, you may run into issues there. Uh, well, not issues, it's just a consideration. Uh, so jumping back up to the top here. So as discussed, uh, what we do with our tags, which is the guppy or the sensor node, we, or any third party tag that you have interest in, uh, we put these on our small or low value assets. Uh, and then we set these tags, 
will send a beacon every few seconds. Uh, and then our gateway devices, provided that the tag is near enough, the gateway will keep a list and it will upload this to the server. Now, so this doesn't have to be telematics guru. There's a smart list kept in the firmware of the device and that will be sent uh, to whatever the chosen server is. Okay. So uh, just coming down to our tag devices, so this is what the guppy looks like, uh, which is just a standard tag. All it really is, is uh, it's perfect for uh, tracking when you low value your assets and near your gateways. Uh, okay, and uh, the sensor node uh, is effectively a similar thing, with, but it has uh, various inputs. Uh, so key ones are an I squared C input for sensor monitoring, uh, as in a lot of common sensors use I squared C. Uh, and on top of that, uh, it also has digital inputs and analog inputs. Uh, so if you want to be measuring uh, a voltage range or if you want to be measuring door open or close, uh, that's going to have you covered there. Uh, and then you're not limited to just using our tags. Uh, Bluetooth is an open interface, so uh, it's quite easy to, if you have different size requirements or a particular tag that, you know, there's ones out there that are doing fuel probes, temperature sensors, uh, in all sorts of different form factory factors and battery lives. Uh, and uh, that will have you covered there. So let's see. Jump that up here. Okay. Okay. Um, and so to get to get going, uh, a few of the key applications just to have in your mind as we're going that we see fit that uh, that we've come up with. There's plenty more out there. I'm sure uh, towards the end we'll we'll hear from uh, we'll hear from uh, everyone about what applications they might uh, think are possible. Uh, but a key one would be tracking low value assets. So you may have your main tracking device, which is the G120, wired into your work vehicles uh, and all your other uh, devices or assets that probably aren't worth having a full scale tracker on or they're either too small for it, like your bladders and your uh, pallets, kegs, anything like that. They can be tagged and then whenever they're in range of a of a gateway device like the G120, uh, that means we know their approximate location. Um, so in the same way, you could be doing inventory management where if you had a gateway such as the Remora at each of your warehouses, you'll know uh, where your uh, where your assets are as in which warehouse they're at. So that will be uh, displayed in that we can tell whichever gateway our tags are reporting to, that must be where they are. Um, else, and another key one is uh, the sensor node uh, it's perfect for cold chain as well uh, in that we're, we're doing away with long cable runs and needing to wire a tracking device into the, the front of the vehicle and then you want to monitor what's you know at the back of a truck which might be 10 meters away that's all handled wirelessly okay. so uh, another key example here is uh, in location tracking so given uh, when our tags are reporting to uh, our gateway devices, we also have an idea of when they're lost. So when they go out of range, well, we know that's the last known location. Okay. So we'll just jump out of here. And okay, uh, and so we're just going to run through a few of the questions that have come in to start before we open up uh, for everyone. Okay, and just seeing that there's a few questions coming on the chat, so I'm just might jump out of here for a second. Okay, um, just bear with us for a second. I'm just going to jump in and. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so we've heard how many Bluetooth tags per gateway. Uh, it, it can depend. Uh, there is there's about a limit of around about 200, which is right. Um, we'll just look that up very, really quickly. Uh, but yeah, from memory, it's about 200. I'm just double checking that. Uh, so. I want to make sure I get the right answer here. Uh, F11. Okay, so we'll just run through quick uh, questions quickly and then we'll jump back into some of the ones that have gone beforehand. But uh, yeah, we can do about 200 uh, tags per gateway. But if you had all 200 uh, sitting right next to your gateway, uh, the device itself can support that in its list. But the thing is, if you have 200 tags all uh, talking at two second intervals, uh, right at the same time, there's a good chance they're all going to talk over each other. So it would need a test, but in, you know, in real world conditions, uh, I think if you're pushing far over 100 at, right at the one gateway, uh, you probably you might run into a bit of problems in that you might just miss a few. Okay. Um, okay. So just do one more, and then we'll come back to we'll come back to these questions at the end. Um, so we have the Bluetooth tags count as device tags, and are they charged on telematics screw? Uh, yes, they are. There is a fee on the price list, uh, which is the it's uh, marked as I'm just finding out which one it is. Uh, it's the product code is PG tag. Okay. Um, so just running into a, so we'll just jump in though and do a, a quick few key terms. So we've come out with the, uh, the gateway device, uh, which was the Remora 2 and G120, just so everyone knows uh, what we're referring to if we say gateway, uh, the Bluetooth tag. So we've heard people calling that the, you know, the end, the node or the, the beacon or, or a sensor. So they're all, somewhat equivalent terms. Mm -hmm. So this will be our, our low low cost uh, Bluetooth tags is what we're referring to when we're talking about its tag. Uh, and what these tags do when they send their data is we refer to it as, as a beacon. So they'll send a frame of data. Uh, and that's also been, I've seen people call that a, a chirp or sometimes we say that the tags advertise uh, or they ping. Uh, so, okay. All right, so we'll just jump through some of the, the questions we've had uh, coming in advance and then we'll come back to these ones. So let's see, but uh, feel free to keep sending them through. Okay, so uh, I'll just jump on. Okay, so uh, just let us know in the chat if you can't see uh, my screen up here, but uh, this is our support page, which is available at support.digitalmatter.com and uh, we've written up some of the, the answers to uh, uh, to some of the questions that came in in advance. So, and this will add in any extras as well, uh, because a lot of these, uh, they link out to certain other resources that really help uh, help with your understanding. Uh, so one question that has come in is, do we support uh, third party tags? Uh, and the short answer is yes. Uh, effectively, any tag that, that beacons as in it just continuously, you know, every few seconds just shouts its information, which would be its ID and its, its data. Uh, that's quite easy for us to integrate. Uh, you can come over and as well and Uh, there's quite an easy way for it to integrate directly as well. Uh, all you need to do is you can add, apply a few different parameters uh, and you can actually start testing your custom tags right now. Uh, it is a little bit uh, fiddly to get going, but uh, once you've got one going tested, it's a really quick way without uh, needing to go through a more complex process 
uh, to just see if the tags are actually working as you expect them to, because uh, at times it is worth a, t a test. You know, you might be looking to test a tag in the back of a truck through, you know, quite a bit of obstruction, uh, and it's it's difficult to to know straight off hand if it's how it's going to perform. So a quick test is pretty easy to achieve. Uh, okay, next one we'll run through is, uh, okay, what sort of range is achieved, achievable? Uh, so a quick way uh, to cover that is, uh, the Bluetooth website does an excellent job of this. Just drop a loading. Uh, and it goes through all the factors that, that cover the range. So a uh, key factors, uh, that we've got other spectrum used. Uh, that's quite fixed to Bluetooth. To Bluetooth. It's always 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, so it, yeah, it's a balance between the range and, and the data rate that we need. Uh, this fire is, uh, our devices are able to operate in two different Bluetooth modes in a standard or long range. Uh, so the long range will, as it says, get you a bit long of a longer range. Uh, and uh, but it will use a bit more power because we need to transmit a little bit longer in this long range mode in order to to get that extra range uh, so it's just a little bit of a trade-off um, and yeah it's application specific if if that's worthwhile um, so we have the receiver sensitivity which uh to put it in in you know in terms of, of human beings it would be uh you know what's the quietest noise you can hear and still understand what someone's saying uh, so if they were whispering to you really quietly, if you could still pick that up. Uh, and so that is somewhat fixed in that we have very sensitive receivers on our G120 and Remora 2. Uh, so, you know, asking the question of what the range of the Remora 2 is, for example, is uh, is not quite the right question to ask. Uh, it's, it's not invalid and it's not wrong. It's just, it's more dependent on uh, this next factor here, which is the transmit power of the tag. So you could think of that in that the, the gateway devices are, are the ones listening uh, and the tags are the ones shouting. So obviously the louder you shout, which is a higher power, the easier it is and the further away uh, someone can hear you from. Uh, okay. And we have antenna gain here, which you can uh, read later on. Again, that's quite fixed. We've, we've got high quality antennas uh, on our devices uh, and then the final one is the path loss, which this is a quite key. Uh, if you're trying to send signals through walls and steel and glass, it's, it's always quite different. So uh, often it is worth just a bit of a test. Uh, but we have this very handy uh, range estimator as well. Uh, and in this article, which we'll, we'll send out uh, to everyone after this, uh, after this webinar, uh, we've actually provided figures that you can use which are um, which are the specific ones for our tags and devices, which you can play around with and give you a range estimate. Uh, and from what we've seen uh, and what we've tested, this estimator is is a little bit conservative, which is which is uh, in a way a good thing because you could be quite confident you should get the range that this spits out. Uh, okay. Okay. So another question we've had asked is. Uh, so if we had multiple gateways in the same environment, uh, does the Bluetooth end node send data to both gateways or does it choose the closest one? Um, so yeah, the scenario, which is a, an application that we've been looking at is, yeah, you want to know whereabouts in the building an asset is. So you might have one gateway up one end of the building and one up the other and whichever gateway uh, the tag is reporting to. Now that's, that's the end of the building it's at. Um, so the answer is yes, uh, the guppy is just shouting shouting to anyone that will listen. So if two different gateways pick it up, they'll both add it to their list uh, and they'll both be, yeah, both of those devices will uh, upload that data to the server and say, yes, both these tags are nearby. Uh, so yeah, you, you can find ways to work around this effectively. So one is to just think about your gateway placement and that uh, you wouldn't be putting, you know, two of them 50 metres apart where they can both pick up the same tag. 
you'd probably space them out a little bit more than that if uh, if that's possible. Uh, and the other one is that uh, it depends on your tag. It's very tag specific, but uh, our guppy tags will send their signal an indication of their signal strength um, to the uh, yeah uh, as to the remora or the G120, uh, and that will be sent up to the server. So on the server side, if you like, you could uh, so you could place the tag at the gateway, which is seeing the stronger signal. So you can do a bit of filtering on that side. Okay. Um, so in the Bluetooth, uh, and yeah, equally you can be uh, setting up a, a tag filter. Uh, so you could tell the Remora to only bother putting tags in its list, which are above a certain signal strength. Now this one can, uh, yeah, this is only really useful if you're using every single tag is the same as Guppy. Um, because you might have one tag that is just doesn't broadcast as, as strong and you're gonna it's gonna appear as if it's further away because the signal's weaker and the only reason that is is it's not uh transmitting at the same power um okay uh i will just skip through as well uh we can come back to this uh if need be but i think we'll get on to some of uh some of the questions that are coming in right now uh, the key one question that's been asked is battery life and range. Uh, and if you just come, come hunt this down uh, after this webinar on a support page, this is the type that the article, um, we have an article here about just listing out the range and the, uh, the range and what battery life you're going to get for, yeah, for different scenarios. Um, okay. And the final one we, we had as well is uh, so is there a mode where the device only chirps when it's being moved? So judging by the question is asking about chirping, I uh, assume that's that's related to the guppy, but it sleeps when it's not moving. Uh, so the answer for that is no. We have catered for an accelerometer on the guppy on the PCB design, uh, but it hasn't been fitted to the current stock. Uh, if you have a requirement for that, we can uh, look at fitting them. Uh, but for uh, in general, I think the idea of this is to try and save some battery life, uh, which isn't quite, uh, isn't really that necessary given the guppy is going to last five years at, at default settings. Uh, and you can also think uh, you wouldn't really ever want to, uh, you wouldn't really ever want to uh, be restricting your device from chirping because then effectively you aren't able to ever contact it with a phone or anything like that um, to be able to change any of the settings. So you can effectively be bricking your guppy if it's just never going to upload unless you're moving it. Um, so what we would be doing is probably doing something like, um, yeah, setting a flag on the device so we, we could say, okay, and that we do, it'll send it in its, in its data. So that will say, okay, that's, that means it's moving. Um, okay. So, all right, so just come back to some of these questions. Okay, so, um, and I might just, yeah, if, I'll just uh, unmute it, whoever's asked the question, so we can have a bit of a chat about this. Um, so, let's see. So, okay. Uh, so, Garen, I've just uh, opened you up. So, sounds like, uh, so you've asked about our question of 200 tags. Is that, uh, have we covered you there? Um, yes, yes, that's all good. Mm, not getting any sound. Just Can you hear me? Uh, hey. Let's see. Oh, okay, I'm back and muted. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll just move on to... Okay. okay, so just moving on to, to Carl's question. So, uh, yes, so tags do count uh, as device tags and there's a fee per, per asset and that is, um, yeah, that is on the price list under TG tag. Uh, okay. So, and, uh, so 
uh, Andrew, we've asked uh, what the accuracy of the beacon to the gateway is. Can you clarify uh, what you mean there? Uh, so we were just looking for um, some approximations around also the, the BLD beacon in terms of a location, will it just sort of snap to where the, the known location of the, the gateway is, or is it able to uh, provide some accuracy around where that beacon is relative to the gateway? Uh, yes, we can't really give positional information uh, for our uh yeah for the tags at the moment uh it is possible if you want to do it on the server side with the rssi but it might not be the most reliable uh, okay uh, okay the next question we have is uh can we use the same scan link for hundreds of tags uh, yes, yeah, so if you're using a lot of tags, you may want to be pushing up the scan link. Uh, but what we found, uh, for example, example, if you are, are pushing every two seconds, so the guppy tag is beaconing every two seconds, you need to be scanning for at least three times the length of that. Uh, so that would be six seconds in this case. Uh, if you had, had hundreds of tags, maybe you go for a 20 or 30 second scan, uh, but it will need a bit of testing in each application. Uh, okay, the battery life with a guppy on, on a 330 metre range. Uh, so I'm just bringing that one up. So the long range, uh, if you were sending a beacon every five seconds, uh, that would give you two and a half years, uh, or one year with two second beaconing. And that's all configurable. So is it possible to use gateways and third party Bluetooth beacons? Yes, yes. that one's been covered. Uh, so let's see. Uh, can, can you get the GPS position of the tag based on the gateway position? Yes, uh, yes you can. Uh, you aren't actually getting a position from GPS on the tag. But what we're saying is, is uh, given we have the GPS GPS position of the gateway, uh, then we're going to say that's about where the tag is. Uh, what else do we have? And we have, uh, are the batteries replaceable on the tags? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, so uh, they, they're just two AAA batteries uh, and there's plenty of other uh, third party tags available with their own batteries as well. Uh, but that's where we see the strength of the guppy in that it's simply uh, two, uh, two AAA batteries. You just go down, energize with ultimate lithiums, what we recommend, uh, and five years off a set of those. And uh, yeah, super easy. Um, okay, so uh, we've had one come in from Adrian, I'll just bring Adrian online. So the multiple gateways improve position accuracy. So uh, Adrian, what do you have in mind for that? What are you trying to achieve there? Come again. Uh, so you're saying do multiple, multiple gateways improve position accuracy. What sort of application do you have in mind for? Oh no, that was another uh, question that, by sorry. Nick. Oh, sorry, Nick, sorry. I'll just bring Nick online, <laughs> reading the line below. Uh, so we've got Nick. Uh, Nick, I'm not sure if you have uh, audio going, uh, but in effect, um, yeah, on the device uh, itself, uh, having multiple gateways won't quite improve position accuracy. Uh, you could do a bit of triangulation if they're all talking to each other at once, uh, as in if you're if you have four gateways and your tag reports to all of them. Uh, and you can compare the signal strength from, strengths from each, but that's going to get quite uh, quite complicated quite fast. So it is definitely possible, but uh, it's just a question uh, as to whether, yeah, whether it's feasible or or whether you want to put the time and effort into doing that. But yeah, it's it's an interesting application. It would be something that is possible. 
Okay. Uh, so, Adrian, coming to yours. So if, you, if there are several devices shouting at the same time, does this affect the noise floor or receive sensitivity? Yeah, uh, specifically, I mean, if, if you want to take a look at a construction site, there's a lot of high tech equipment and technology on these sites nowadays. Yeah. Uh, and it may not necessarily all be guppy. It could be proprietary equipment for the construction company that's using Bluetooth as well. So there's a lot of Bluetooth noise in the air. How does that affect the receiver sensitivity of the gateway? Uh, I have to get back to you on that on the engineers uh, from the firmware guys, but uh, yeah, it, it, of course it is going to have an impact if lots of things are talking all at the same time. Uh, that's kind of what I was getting at with the 200 uh, devices at the one gateway. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if they are going to all talk over each other, yeah, the noise floor is coming up. So it is, it is going to be harder for the gateway to hear, um, but it is, it is quite, yeah, it is very application specific. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it is hard to give a kind of overarching answer, but kind of in short, yes, it is It is gonna make, uh, so what the main impact will be is it's gonna limit your range a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's, that's just, what I was imagining yeah. is, is everything that's on the fringe or the edge of the, the coverage, yeah. which is yeah. not dropping off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. But then if it, it, if it manages to get through at another time, well then you still know around about where it was, uh, yeah. you know, either way. The, the transmit side of these things, the, the little guppies, do they ramp up their, their, their transmit power automatically? Uh, no, so we set them all for 8 uh, dBm, which is our maximum. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking if they're not that... getting through and everything starts ramping up, everything's going full noise, that just amplifies the problem. Pardon the pun. Uh, yeah, well, in that if they don't ramp up though, because they don't actually know if they're getting through or not, they're just yeah. transmitting at the one at the one power. So you can configure anywhere between negative 20 dpm and 8 dpm. That's a good um, thing. Yeah, so it, they just kind of go, they just chirp at whatever you set them to nonstop. Uh, and yeah, and that's where it's going to be um, the whole time. Uh, we do have the option as well of producing a, a, a high power one. Uh, but as you see on the battery life, uh, we don't have stock of these, but we can fit a special higher power module uh, but what we found that can give you close to 500 meters line of sight range. Um, but you're only going to get about half a year with two second beaconing. And uh, we feel that perhaps that's not quite so useful, but uh, if there's demand for it, we can produce uh, that module. It sounds like that uh, would be a very specific scenario. Yeah, exactly. It might end up, uh, yeah, really, uh, yeah, it's just half a year doesn't seem feasible you might be running around changing a lot of batteries on a lot of tags very often um, okay so moving on we've got uh, a question what is the impact to remora to battery life to scan bluetooth tags uh, it is quite minimal uh, in fact to be scanning tags the, the main um, the main drain on battery life is the gps fixes and the uh, yeah, and the uploads. <laughs> I just, uh, it smells like a barbecue after a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so it is quite a minimal scanning, but if you are going to, because uh, a lot of the scanning applications, you really, on the Remora 2, you might be waking up every half an hour or, or maybe you'd be waking up uh, at the start of a trip, at the end of a trip, or yeah, on some other period and scanning for about 30 seconds, that is quite minimal on battery life. Uh, it's more about your uploading really, because to get the best use out of a lot of scans, often you will need to be uploading the data and that's going to use a fair bit more power. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, if anyone has any further questions or uh, if anyone's got any potential applications, we'd like to kind of open the floor. So uh, just keep sending them through on the chat. I think if we all talk at once, uh, it's a bit similar to the tags. It might, uh, yeah, it might get a bit noisy. So uh, just keep them coming through or otherwise we'll, we'll look at wrapping up in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, so yeah, just, just wondering if anyone's got any, any further questions about, um, yeah. And we also have Stu coming in as well to have a bit of a chat. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is uh, Stuart from Digital Matter. 
most of you know me. I uh, just wanted to say uh, thanks, Matt. That's been an excellent uh, first effort. This is the first time we've done a webinar and we're obviously just trying to figure our way around it. So apologies for any of the audio delays and so on. Um, our objective is to reach you all um, in one go so that you can all and, uh, be part of a, a discussion group um, and a two-way communication as well. So we'll get to that in the next few webinars. But yeah, certainly from Digital Matter, um, we would like to thank you for taking the time to um, listen into our uh, webinar today. And we really appreciate a bit of feedback, both positive and negative. We, you know, we want to make sure we get this right. And we want to make sure that this is a good tool for you to learn more about our products, certainly in a technical uh, point of view, and be able to um, use that with your customers and your applications. So uh, yeah, as far as that goes, I think that's everything. And yeah, unless there's any further questions or uh, I feel like we've covered what's come in, but yeah. Yeah, I think we've covered most of what's coming in, so we'll just sign off now and uh, have a good Christmas, everyone, if we don't uh, speak to you before then. Thanks a lot.